drops and bubbles can seem whimsical sometimes. I think of kids blowing bubbles or drops splashing in a puddle. We see it every time we, we drink a soda um, or sparkling water. And they do happen so fast and they're, they're surrounding us that we often just take them for granted. Bubbles are important to study because they, they're responsible for a, a variety of phenomena. If they have viruses or bacteria in them, they, we can become sick. Um, or alternatively, if they're something that's just aromatic, we can then smell and appreciate. So it's been known for, for over 60 years that when a, a bubble pops, it can create this, this aerosols, this jet coming up. But what's been less understood is how these bubbles come about to begin with. What's different now is that we have these tools for looking at, at high speed images and flows and because of advances in digital computing, we can take quantitative measurements in a, in a way that was just never possible. One of the, the largest uncertainties in, in climate models is at the air-sea interface. Um, when a bubble pops over the ocean, the liquid that comes up can transfer heat and dissolved gases, salt, into the atmosphere. And this is then important in understanding the overall climate model. Our ultimate goal is to be able to predict and to, to characterize how a bubble is going to pop and how thick it will be, what size of aerosols might be formed, how fast it would retract. What that would then give us is better predictions and reduce uncertainty in a lot of the, the current models that are, are being used.